We could not get through this show without talking about the Pied Piper. Today marks day seven of the R. Kelly trial. In a testimony, Tom Arnold, Kelly's former studio manager, testified that the singer docked his pay because he booked a male tour guide for Kelly and his girlfriend when they attended Disney World. Arnold told jurors that he finally got fed up with the singer's bizarre rules and quit in 2011, stating that Kelly always requested a female tour guide when on trips. The former employee added that the troubled singer would fine staffers for minor infractions, such as eating his donuts. R. Kelly is charged with nine counts of racketeering in violations of the Federal Man Act. The stories that we're hearing coming out of here, uh, both Reese, Dr. Carr, the stories we're hearing coming out of this trial have been devastating, to say the least. This is a lot bigger than, um, th th than the Lifetime special that we saw, uh, that everybody saw about R. Kelly. At this point, you're having people speak about very, in very, in very grave detail about sexual deviance, about physical punishments, about basically being held captive, about the, the rules of people who they weren't allowed to contact that they had to let R. Kelly know and get permission before they went to the bathroom, that they couldn't go outside without a male escort. We're hearing more and more details, gruesome details in many cases, coming out of this trial. Um, what, what are your thoughts thus far with what you've seen and heard, Reese? Um, first, I don't know if you know Faraji is still there, <laughs> but um, I will say... Oh, but I, I will say I, it's it's horrific. Number one, and, and you know, I one of the things that I really hate, to be honest, is the way that um, Aaliyah is being dragged into this. You know, yesterday was the anniversary of her uh, passing, or no, I'm sorry, her birthday, and um, you know, it's just uh, she's not here to defend herself, so it's just really horrific to hear her um, life being talked about in a way that, you know, she had completely moved on from that chapter in her life. But, you know, she, just because she's famous doesn't mean that her um, trauma or, her, or what she suffered from is any worse than anybody else. I mean, he he's a predator. He is a predator and, um, you know, he took advantage of people, not just sexually, but with his power. I mean, he could go to jail for labor violations, you know? I mean, he's just an all around scumbag and piece of shit. And, you know, I, I don't see how anybody can can watch what's happening here and listen to the stories that are just so, um, you know, plentiful and still manage to defend him and still manage to come up with crazy notions that there's a conspiracy against him and, oh, why, why you know, why are you going after black men, you know, and where's Harvey Weinstein and this, that, and the other? <laughs> You know, he needs to be held accountable for his um, atrocities that he has conducted over and over again. And, and it's actually amazing that he isn't on trial for even more crimes. I think he's getting off quite easy with what he is um, alleged to have um, done. Faraji, I'm going to get you in here before we have to move on to our next story. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the most recent developments in the R. Kelly trial? First, I appreciate you, Reese, for making that, uh, for, for bringing that to the light about Aaliyah. I think that um, it's interesting that um, the prosecutors decided to use her story. And I it, I mean, I'm glad that they used her story because so many of us probably were still in the dark about really how deep that rabbit hole goes in terms of, you know, him starting to even look at Aaliyah at the age of 12 mm -hmm. um, and then having sexual, you know, relationships with her, you know, th uh, you know shortly thereafter. Then the whole scare about him being pregnant, and then leading to the fake, mm. the, uh, the, the fake documents, and the whole nine about to, you know her age. And I mean, when you get to it, and I'm with Reese one thousand percent, absolutely sickening. I mean, folks, when you read, uh, when I read the uh, the account of the testimony from what they classified as Jane Doe number five, I believe, which is Azrael uh, McClary, who was a part mm. of that great that that historic conversation with uh, Gail King when they had that major interview, you know, and how she said she was, she lied during that interview, how she even, you know, R. Kelly was in the room and, and had coughed a couple of times if he felt like the answers were a little bit too incriminating for him mm. uh, about him. I mean, when you read these details, there's no way in the world that you can have a conversation and still say, oh, he's a musical genius. I can separate mm. him from the music. Right. Well, you know, um, there's no way in the world that we can look at even the story of Aaliyah. And I'm with, again, I'm with Reese 1,000% on this. 
she's not here to even defend herself. We celebrated or we acknowledged the 20-year death anniversary of our dear beloved sister. 20 years she she lost her she she was not here with us and she can't defend herself and 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 i don't know you know i, I just it left a bad taste in my mouth that the prosecutors used her story in such a way that that you didn't bring the parents in you didn't bring any other close friends or relatives of Aaliyah into the conversation or into the stand but r kelly he i mean folks he deserves everything he gets and if you sit there and tell me to this day that R. Kelly still should not get what he deserved because mm. you don't think he... You're absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's nothing else to it. You're just mm. insane. Dr. Carr, <laughs> I know you have predicted before how you thought that this trial was going to go. Has anything shocked you or changed your, your mind in terms of believing that R. Kelly just might get off? No, no. I, I, it's just, <laughs> it's a trick. It's a tragedy. I mean, you know, first of all, there's no moral standard in this country, just like there's no moral mm -hmm. standard in Western civilization. And the rich hide their crimes. There was a president of the United States caught on tape saying, I moved on her like a bitch. You can grab them by the, the P word. And he sat in the office and was, was elevated. This isn't mm -hmm. defending R. Kelly at all. This is saying that the madness runs deep in the human spirit. And people who are looking for an excuse will find one. Now, it's more likely than not that he will be convicted. And as we know, he's not just facing a New York court. He's got charges in several states. And as we just heard from everyone, these, these, these witnesses, I mean, no human can hear that and not be moved. But the deep thing about this, I think, is that when we look in the mirror, when it's just us, we have to confront the fact that somewhere in every human being, there's something in our spirit, in our psyche, right. that must make us wonder, what kind of society do we live in? And do we really know the people we're talking to? Do we really know who we're dealing with? Because somebody, if they look, law, any lawyer will tell you, I just, need a, I just need one in the box. I don't need to convince all the jury. <laughs> I just hmm. need enough to get the guy off. What mm -hmm. are the odds? What are the odds? We just got to wait and see, y'all. At least that's that's what I think. Hey, Doc, can we get, can we also just and Reese? I, I love to get the, the thoughts on this. People have been saying, look at the parents, that the parents are to blame, but I don't think you can blame the parents necessarily. And I get it, but I do, you know I understand it's easy to quote unquote blame the parents for wanting to you know your daughter to be associated with this man. But I don't know. I'm, 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 it's hard, and I and I would love to get you know just there. I, I know that there's a lot of conversation that we should we should blame the parents. We should we should charge the parents. We should punish the parents because nah. they put their daughters in that position. Now, Far Faraji, we had to ask Amisha. R. R. Kelly, R. Kelly put, <laughs> R. Kelly put their daughters in that position, and I think that it's very frustrating to see in, in any case where there is molestation, where there is rape, where there is sexual violence of any kind, parents get blamed for that because at the end of the day, this was a grown man making adult decisions, and the adult decisions he made was to prey on middle school kids and to prey on mm -hmm. early high school kids. This was a guy who literally parked his car outside of middle schools and waited for young girls to come out. This was a guy who went to the very well known hangouts of teens in the city and would try to entice girls. He would buy them clothes. He would buy them shoes. He would tell them that he could make them into superstars. He could make them into Aaliyah. He made dozens upon dozens of promises to these young girls. And then like many people who are manipulative, like many people who are abusers, he abused them. He scared them to death. He segmented them from their family and friends. And at the end of the day, they were stuck in basically a torture chamber of sorts for years. I, I think that mm -hmm. the only person that we can honestly blame here and put a lot of the blame on, it lands squarely on R. Kelly. Now, if we want to look at some other people, look at the people around him who made it happen. The people who were mm -hmm. his transport staff, the people who bought planes tickets for these young girls, the people who ensured that R. Kelly's no read and tell would be able to create fake IDs and a whole bunch of other things for these young children, because that's mm. what happened. He didn't do this solo. He had a whole team of people who made it possible. That's, mm. right. that's, that's what makes it satanic. That really, I mean, mm. that's what makes it satanic. You had grown ass men and some women 
who allow this to happen. And we know it. We hear the stories. And we see those level of enablers. And I don't... And I'm going to just tell you honestly, it's 2021. If you find a consciousness in 2021 after years of this, and you finally say, I had to say something on the stand, man, get the hell out of the, the, out the <laughs> damn... my damn face, man. Like, you finally had a damn heart no, after... they, <laughs> they finally tried to not get massive charges, is what they did. Mm -hmm. right. Folks, back to that whole Mark video in just one moment. Football bands and one of the best fan experiences in the country. The Cricket BX Swag Challenge kickoff returns to Atlanta on August 28th, along with special guests. College game day. Then Alcorn State takes on North Carolina Central with conference bragging rights on the line. Center Park Stadium is the place to be on August 28th. Come tailgate all day before enjoying a primetime matchup on the gridiron. You don't want to miss this. Check out MeAxWackChallenge.com for more information. And, of course, folks, join Roller Martin Unfiltered in Atlanta Friday and Saturday for the SWAC MEAC Challenge. Friday, we'll be broadcasting live from the Atlanta Braves baseball game. We'll be hearing from the commissioners of the SWAC and MEAC, plus school presidents and other great guests. On Saturday, we'll be from the Coca-Cola Fan Zone at the stadium where the game is taking place. We'll be broadcasting live. Some great uh, things going on. Tig is going to be spinning. they got some chefs out there with the Coca-Cola kitchen. We're going to have some phenomenal stuff for you, plus We'll be live streaming the halftime show and the concert after the game. Check out Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday and Saturday. And we thanks all of this in partnership with Coca-Cola, the Swag Meg Challenge. We'll see you all there.